Welcome back. In this video, we will see how to change JVM size or JVM heap size in WebLogic server. In this video, we will cover three scenarios. First one is same JVM size for all the servers using user override script. For the second scenario, we will configure different JVM size for each server using user override script again. And in the third scenario, we will use admin console and try to change JVM size for the managed servers. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to check out my channel for more interesting videos related to WebLogic administration and SOA development. So let's begin. Let us see the first scenario that is same JVM size for all the servers. For that, we can edit two scripts. One is set domain environment.sh and the another one is set user override.sh. It is recommended to change set user override.sh for the custom properties instead of set domain environment.sh because all default properties are there in the set domain environment.sh and if you are upgrading your domain all will be overridden by the new domain properties but in this video we are going to see both uh, so let's see that we are inside domain bin and you can see we have several scripts for start and stop so first we'll start weblogic server and see what is the current jvm size so let's start it and here you can see java memory argument is set to 4 gb so this is for minimum size that is xms and this is for the maximum size of the heap that is xmx and uh, let's see how we can change this using set domain environment.sh i'm stopping admin server again so we will edit set domain environment.sh and you can see we have a comment for user memory arguments and here we can add a variable to define our heap space so i'm exporting user memory argument and now the heap size should be 1.5 gb that is 1536 mb for minimum and the maximum if you notice we have set user override dot sh mentioned here so if set domain environment variable script find set user override script it will run that script before exporting user memory arguments so let's save this and see whether our change is reflecting or not now we will start our server again and this time you can see the jvm size is updated from 4 gb to 1.5 gb i am stopping my server again now remember if you put this uh, export statement without adding any condition all servers will be having the same size of jvm that is 1.5 gb now let us create set user override dot sh script and now we will remove our export statement from set domain environment dot sh and we will see whether we are able to change the jvm side using set user override dot sh or not so let's open this again and this time we will remove this export statement from here let's save this one and now we are going to create set user override.sh because we don't have that script here for some web logic versions it is there by default so first check whether you have that script or not so we are going to create that script here and we'll add export statement in this script this time we are going to create 1 gb of heap so that we can identify whether set user override script is working or not let's save this one and now we'll start our server again and you can see this time java memory argument is set to 1 gb instead of 1.5 gb now let us start our managed server and observe what is the jvm size it should be similar to what we have for the admin server for that we'll check server log so i am inside osb server 1 logs so let's check logs and here you can see in the java memory argument it is 1 gb it is similar to what we have in admin server there is one more way you can check jvm size using ps command for that you can run ps minus ef grab server name and 
and you can see our heap size is 1 GB. Now let us discuss the scenario number two where we can have different JVM sizes for each server. So if we talk about the general scenario, admin server requires less amount of memory because it does not process real time requests. So let us see how we can configure different JVM sizes for admin server and manage server. Also, don't forget to give executable rights to set user override script. For that, you can use chmod command and you can give executable rights to user. And you can see the color of the script has been changed to green. And here you can see we have executable rights for the user. Now let's try to edit this script so that we can have different JVM sizes for manage server and admin server. So we will remove this export from here. And we will put this if condition in the script. You can see if server name is not equal to admin server, the heap size will be 1.5 GB. And if server name is equal to admin server, the heap size will be 1 GB. So for admin server, we are allocating less space than manage servers. So let's save this and check whether it is reflecting or not. To test this, we will stop our admin server and manage servers first and restart it. Now let us start our admin server. And we'll see what is the size of our admin server JVM. And you can see it is 1 GB. So once our admin server is up, we will start manage server and see. It should be 1.5 GB for the manage server. So we'll start our OSB server. And we'll go to server logs and see the size of JVM. And uh, here you can see the size of JVM is 1.5 GB. So we were able to configure JVM sizes for admin server and manage server using set user override.sh. Now we are going to see how we can change JVM size for manage servers using admin console. So for that, we'll remove the condition for the manage server in set user override.sh. So we'll remove the condition for manage servers. And we'll save this. Now we'll go to admin console. You can go to manage server. Here you'll have to go to configuration and then server start. And here you can see we have startup arguments available. So we'll have to add JVM argument here. So for that you'll have to take a lock and then you can add arguments here. So I'm adding 1024 MB or you can add 1 GB also. For that you'll have to give G. So let's give 1 GB here. And uh, we can save this and activate this. So our change has been activated. We will restart our OSB server one. So we are restarting our OSB server one. Let's check our logs. And you can see we are seeing 8 GB for the JVM size, but we configured 1 GB. So this is the default JVM size for the manage server. If you go down in the logs, you will see it will be overridden by 1 GB of size. So our change is working. And similarly, you can change your JVM size for other manage server as well. So we have seen how to control JVM size using override script or console. Similarly, you can pass any Java related argument in the startup and uh, you can utilize any of the method for that if you found this video helpful please like my video subscribe my channel hit the bell icon for the further notification 
and don't forget to leave a comment so that i can come up with different different topics for you thank you